Hi guys, welcome back to the Bloodbath Racing page. This is Harley. Hi. And this is our new shirt. All right, and I'm gonna show them to you. So this is my favorite. This is the zero F's given. And Harley's gonna hold the phone for a second and show you mine. Can you see it, good girl? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, and mine, mine we actually have in kid sizes too and babies and kid sizes which we'll post um on the www.bloodbathracing.com and we also want to talk about our drawing so our drawing holly give me that paper so i don't forget i had to write it down you guys so our drawing we have constant designs is giving a full color five by seven banner uh cameron's converter is doing 20 percent off and a t-shirt mm -hmm. carolina no time is doing a t-shirt and who else Blood bath racing t-shirt. We're doing a t-shirt. So if you want it, Shannon will autograph it. And so if you purchase a shirt, it's uh, one entry. A uh, hat is one entry. If you purchase a shirt and a hat, it's two entries, two shirts, two entries. You guys get it. If you purchase a sticker, well, thank you. So thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, CJ, tell us a little bit about this car. Shannon painted this car when? Probably 12 years ago. And tell me just a little bit about it. So tell me about this motor. Uh, it's, it's a, motor, a Coyote motor out of a 17 Mustang GT. Uh, 6R80 trans, uh, bolt-ons on motor. Uh, where's that? Um, <laughs> eventually we're gonna do a um, 80 mil and should make like eight nine hundred to the tire be a fun little street car um, so you're gonna put an 80 millimeter turbo on it eventually yeah after it's finished we're gonna run it a little bit on motor get used to it get it dialed in and then uh, tear it apart again so are you trying to make it a street car yeah uh, i want to keep it full interior it's gonna have ac power steering all that we don't know we're gonna try and running in a class, but we don't know which one yet. We haven't decided. So are you doing all the work personally to this car? Uh, yeah, me and my dad. It, it was his, and he gave it to me for my 21st birthday. So I've been working on it for about a year and a half now. A little backstory on the car. Chris, when did you buy this car? Like 20 years ago, probably. Yeah, 20 plus years ago. And it was basically a basket case. Chris, I think, gave like 500 bucks for it, and it was in pieces, had no interior. It was two basic. 200. It was basically a pile of junk, but it was a four-eyed coupe, and uh, Chris bought it in just parts out of a 
really is out of the parts lot. And uh, he's had it for 20 plus years. It's had 10 different engine combinations in it probably. You know, uh, the engine bay has been smoothed and painted. I painted this car, you know, 10 plus years ago. Um, but he takes good care of his stuff, so it still looks pretty good. You know, most people wouldn't believe it was painted 10 years ago, but, you know, he's pieced together and made it a really nice car from a, pretty much a basket case. Um, you know, about three cars 20 plus years ago. But it's been in the family forever, and they're, it's going to make a super cool street car with a Coyote motor and a turbo 6R80. You know, the car's always been you know, well liked from way back in the day, had some Bogarts on it and a 306. Yeah. yeah. Pro ship the T5. Yeah. All right, CJ, what kind of transmission are you about to put in it? 6R80. It's like an F-150 trans. Change a few things with it, put a converter in it, send it. And how much longer do you plan on being before you're gonna have this thing out? Well, it's been sitting here for like seven years and it's had three, at least in different engine combinations. Yeah, had LS3. Yeah, it had LS motor, didn't even get ran basically. Had a 2J that was almost done. 2JZ that came close to getting running and then changed completely. And then I had a 306 with a turbo kit that's actually on Chase's car now. Yeah. And then that was actually like pretty much about to be done. I had everything to finish it. Donnie talked me into buying, get a Rex 17 GT with like 6,000 miles on it. And he, every time he'd come over here, he'd talk to me and try and talk me into buying it and Coyote swapping this and finally he got me. So I sold everything for the 306, the turbo kit to chase and some other stuff to chase and pulled the trigger on I mean, Coyote swap. So we're hoping to have it done. December 20, 21-ish. 20, 21 ish. Maybe we'll <laughs> Maybe. Um, I will say though, of any car, like if any car deserves a Coyote swap with a turbo, it's this car. A clean black four eye coupe, like that's that's the like supreme streetcar material as far as I'm concerned. And uh, this car been around a long time. You know, Chris has had it forever and done so much work to it, like. You know, it's unbelievable what it came from. People wouldn't even, they can't even imagine if they had saw it when he drug it out of the field. Like, I, I wish I had pictures of it and stuff because it was bad. It had no interior in it. The motor was locked up. I, had a, I bought three cars. I bought this one. I bought a, um, a 91 notchback from Kevin Lockamy mm -hmm. that uh, had black interior in it. So that's the interior that's in there. So it's got a full 91. The whole car's wired as a 91. I bought a, I think it was like an 89 hatch that was just ragged as death, but it had a real good motor and trans in it. That's how it originally started. And we put that stock motor and trans in it, and we, we run the shit out of it with just the stock motor for, I mean, remember back in the day, it had 10 holes with slicks on the back? Yeah, yeah. And I'd do like 5,000 RPM clutch dumps out of Ken's through with it. <laughs> yeah. Just ragging the shit out of it. So, it's been a club. It's definitely called a chair bell over the years. You know, all the horsepower junkies, dragon rights, any of the guys from those days remember this car. I'm sure we're on Bogarts out there towing the front tires with a five speed in it, you know, on nitrous. It's been through, it's been through a war, but uh, I don't think they'll ever get rid of this thing. This is the, like a family member at this point. I'll get rid of the wife before I get rid of that. <laughs> you know that's going on YouTube, right, Chris? <laughs> she don't know how it works either, Oh, okay. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Oh man. All right. We just happened to be over here uh, working on bloodbath. You know, we had trans problems. I know you guys saw the last video um, on bloodbath. Last, the last video, we were having a converter slip issue, um, but we came over here because Chris has a lift he lets us use. So, um, luckily, we were able to. Uh, we, I think.
So we uh, we just was looking at uh, CJ's car because we're over here at Chris's shop. He lets us use the lift to work on blood bath some, and uh, we pulled the trans out of this thing because we were having a converter issue. We didn't know really what was wrong. Um, you know, the converter hadn't really changed since we had it out before and it was like really tight, which is what we expected out of this stator. You know, that's what it takes to go really fast. And uh, we just didn't know what was going on, but I put this three speed in and we didn't know exactly what was, what we had. So we pulled it out because we were gonna take the converter to Byron, but then after we started looking at the restrictors and I found my, my paperwork on the trans from Proformance, um, we figured out that we just think it had too big of a bleed jet in the converter charge circuit. So we put a smaller jet in there and did some trans brake tests. And uh, it looks like that's gonna fix it. The pressure's up quite a bit with just a little bit smaller jet. We uh, configured one of the dumps. It has two external dumps on the exhaust side. We configured one of those dumps to uh, maintain charge pressure because uh, basically the longer we sat on the trans brake, the higher the charge pressure went, which you know, is, will affect the way the converter locks up. So if the, if the charge pressure keeps climbing, then it makes it knock the tire off essentially. So like if you get burned down, you know, burned down bandit, then uh, charge pressure will go way up and it'll knock the tire off. So I configured one of my external dumps on a window switch as a secondary uh, activation. So if charge pressure gets over a hundred per se, just as a rough number, it'll activate the dump until it gets back below 90. So it'll just pulse the dump to maintain charge pressure between 90 and 100 pounds at all times if you get hung out. Um, you know, it takes it a few seconds to get up that high, but at least it'll stabilize it there so it'll be consistent. But that's just one more thing you can do with the dumps, which I went over in a previous video. But if you guys have any questions about that, you can just comment or whatever. But um, that's kind of just what we got going on this week. We're gonna go testing somewhere this weekend. Um, not sure where we may go to lions, tigers, and bears, or we could just end up going to Orangeburg for a private test, or might go to 710 Dragway and play around. Um, not really sure yet, but we'll be out somewhere getting you guys some racing footage this week. Um, but for now, we're just working on this thing. Had to uh, had to put a new motor on my trailer. My uh, trailer has manual jacks, and I converted them to power with a with a dump truck tarp motor. I might, I went right in there and mounted it up myself because the hydraulic jack for these trails is like 1800 bucks, but this thing has worked exceptional for a couple of years and the motor finally went outside to go put a motor on that thing this week. Um, so we got that buttoned up, got the car back together, trans back in, did a couple of spool tests tonight. Looks promising as far as the pressures go. Had a good talk with Byron today about some converter data stuff. Talked to Dave at Proformance. Even though I bought this transmission secondhand, he was really helpful and uh, he had no problem going over data with me and what he thought I needed and that was super cool. He was very knowledgeable about, you know, different converter combinations and what the converter's like for fluid flow and that kind of thing. And that stuff is invaluable. You know, you can't put a price on that kind of data and information when someone has a lot of experience like that. So I appreciate him helping me out, um, you know, just spending a few minutes on the phone, me explaining the circuitry and what he thought I needed and what is pretty conventional as far as pressures with these converters and stuff like that. So that kind of helped me out as far as what the target. So hopefully we'll be back in the ballpark. Um, car showing great potential. It's been pretty fast on low boost and the front half seems to be working. The car's working really well. So maybe we'll have some good numbers this week for you guys, but uh, appreciate you guys support. Like and subscribe, hit the bell as usual. Merchandise link below. We got the new shirts out, um, the three by seven, Banner giveaway from Constant Design, custom banner for you guys, whatever you want. Uh, we're gonna have a discount coupon for Cameron's in there and a couple shirts. So you guys don't forget about that. Buy some merchandise, please. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time.